here from everybody here at goss.ie. We are counting down the top 10 stories of 2015. I'm Ali Ryan, the editor here at Goss, and Lisa McLaughlin, deputy editor. We're very excited here today, aren't we? Yeah, of course we are. We can't believe it's been another year, a huge year of celebrity gossip. So we're gonna have to count it down. Yeah, and of course we do have some champagne and we're all here in the office. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to it. So number 10 on the list, the 10th most popular story read on Golf Study this year was that very special moment when Jason Bowen from Codeline proposed to his girlfriend. Yeah, and I was actually there at the concert when he did it and I have to say, like I totally gasped, I was supposed to be going to the bathroom and I just I like, full on stopped and I was like, hold up, I'll watch this for a few minutes first. But everyone, like you could hear a pin drop in the stadium it when it so happened. Quiet. Like, yeah, it was like everyone, <gasps> like the biggest gasp I've ever heard. Obviously the guys are playing with Glenn Hansard and Ed Sheeran at Ed Sheeran's Cell out Crow Park shows and they kind of came back for the second night and they all performed um, the L Triangle together. And then it just kind of had this, uh, I just uh, one second minute. Ed, who by the way, can we just say for 2015, became the man to sing when someone was proposing. Yeah, he's Or any celebrity wedding. Ed Sheeran was there. Ronan and the Storms. Yes. Yeah, he did Little Mix, uh, her yeah. proposal. Yeah, so it was only right that he did another one. So. But it was one of those moments where like literally the whole nation kind of came together and it was just such a beautiful moment in there. Yeah. And then we put the photo up on Facebook and it was one of our most liked photos of the entire year. Which is amazing. Do you know what people love love? That proposal was just insane. I was talking to Diana Benici about it actually oh, yeah. during the year and she was saying that the girls all knew so they were all standing backstage and they were like oh we'll take your bag we'll help you with this because like they knew that she was about but to go on stage. how keep it quiet like because it is such I a know, huge secret. Such a huge secret. <laughs> I know but I suppose if she had any inkling do you think she would have gone on that stage? Probably not but what a way yeah. to propose and I feel bad for the rest of the Codeline ads. How are they going to propose? Well Vinny's already yeah. late. He earlier in the year. Yeah, but so. Mark and Steve, they're gonna have to re up their game name in 2016. They might, but I just love what Frezzy actually tweeted after he goes, Thanks, thanks, Jay, you've ruined all of our chances there. He's yeah. like, You kind of ruined any engagement after this. So I think uh, he's speaking volumes for the men of Ireland. Sorry, lads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna move on actually to number nine on our list, the ninth most popular story read on Goss this year. Surprising enough, actually, it's when Russell Crowe was on the Late Late Show. I don't know if any of you guys remember it, but mm. he obviously is an A-lister Hollywood actor. He is a notoriously difficult to interview. I've interviewed him, he was lovely to me, but it was slightly awkward, wasn't it? On it it was, because what he came out, because Ryan O'Neill, he's a huge Hollywood star. Everyone would have known that he had this, you know, high profile relationship with Farrah Fawcett and he chose her over his daughter. And he and just said that. And he Russell just Crow openly made. said this like huge, and dropped this bomb and everyone was like, sorry, what? Russell came and was like, sorry, how bleeping? Yeah. Uh, like awkward <laughs> was that? That's so uncomfortable. He was, he was looking at Ryan and goes, I think you need therapy after that. So, so it started off seriously awkward. He, yeah, he, he wasn't afraid of saying how he felt. And then obviously he went up and decided to play tune. I don't think he actually knew that the Late Late Show was live. Yeah, and we've said this to Ryan <laughs> since and Ryan agrees. It, so basically Russell also plays in a band and he said he was going to get up and yeah. play some music. He got up to play with the house band and he seemed to think that it wasn't live because he was telling everyone what to do. Then anyway, finally he gets started and the crowd, the lovely late late crowd started clapping along and he literally told everyone to stop clapping unless they were going to do it in time. <laughs> Sorry, it just like this. <laughs> it just gets it funnier so every awkward. time I hear it. It was so awkward. I know, but you know what, we have a bit of cringe TV. We actually but do. But you know what, I mean. But he was still good, you know what. so much crack and it's the ninth red story on this site in 2015. So that's pretty high hits there. And Ryan himself said that he loved having him there. It's just, it came across a bit strange. I think people have an opinion of Russell. Not everyone enjoys interviewing him. Like I said, I actually did. I thought he was lovely. I think you just have to be careful with how you talk to I him. I know, but you know what? The one thing that we know is that the Late Late Show always has a few surprises and a few great moments throughout the year. So we'll be looking forward to that in 2016 anyway. So we're going to move on straight to number eight now. This is probably one of my favorite stories of 2015, just because of how random it was. So all Westlife fans out there, I mean, everyone's still kind of obsessed about what Nikki and Keen and Shane, what everyone's doing, you know, a new album's coming out, they're presenting a new show. Marcus Feely though, before bringing out his solo album, decided to become a caterer. Yeah, yeah, he decided to up sticks and go to the festivals as a, as a, a, a undercover of, almost. A, a kind of, people weren't expecting it, but he wasn't undercover when he was down there. So he was, 
bringing the people some crepes and some tea and coffee. And he said a lot of people did get a shock when they saw him there. But he did try to say it wasn't like he was broke or anything. That was the reason why he was doing it. It was actually a, a new business yeah. venture. And to be honest, he hadn't done anything since 2012. You know, that's yeah. since the band had broken up. He'd been working on his own music, but he said he'd seen this van and he goes, you know what, I'd love to do, like fix it up and just do this kind of mad idea. And sure enough, absolutely look, random. He, his business sword, sure enough. But he got so much publicity out of it because I remember hearing one two of them during the year and he was talking about the article that he wrote <laughs> and that people from like China and Japan have been tweeting him like asking what's going on with the catering <laughs> business. Does he still have the catering business or is he focused more on the Well, no, he still has it, but and he and he's very proud of it. Like he's not afraid to talk be proud, about it. Be proud. <laughs> but uh, obviously his his soda career has kind of taken over that and yeah. you know, he's doing so well with it as well, you know, with all some live shows coming up and the release of the album. So yeah, I think he's just a little bit preoccupied on the catering side. Maybe he, he'll outsource it for, for next year while he's maybe... Yeah, do you want to work for Marcus Feely? I'm sure we can get him up for again. Work for him hey. now. And <laughs> um, we're going to stick with West Life Stories, actually, and move swiftly on to number seven. Um, another big story this year is when Brian McFadden talked about leaving. Obviously, he was like the Jerry Halliwell of West Life, yes. you know, the Zayn Malik before his time. Yes. Brian left wanted to do a solo career, but then he kind of came out this year and said he regretted leaving. He'd never said that before. And why? Why did you regret it? Now, you need to take it with a pinch of salt. The reason why he said he regretted it was because he probably thought he was going to make more money if he'd stayed. <laughs> so, yeah. Which he would have. Which he definitely would have. He definitely would have, because if you look at the lads, they're all, they're all doing all right so far. But he... Yeah, it's a bit of a silly reason, but he said he wouldn't have been happy, you know, it was just before the fourth tour, you know. And he wanted to be on his own, but the, the thing is, the problem that Brian had, I think this year is what Zayn is going to have too, is that he missed out on a lot of the royalties of the songs that happened afterwards yeah, as well. So Brian obviously did go out, he had some good songs, but I suppose... That's what's real to me. Yeah, that's what's real to me, oh my god, I love that I song. Know. And then the Delta Goodrum song that started the whole other relationship. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm surprised him and Vogue never got together and a little hit. Can Vogue sing? We need to find this We out. need to find this That could be the next you have. Karaoke. Mm. <laughs> um, so that was actually a really popular story. We always have a lot of Westlife fans on the site, and I think people were just a bit kind of confused about it. And well, also, would you be? You would be. Any of our Westlife stories, they do so well. So we've had other stories like Nikki Burns saying that the lads don't really talk together, and then how many times have we heard the lads denying a reunion? Like, are they ever going to get back together? This has been the question on everyone's lips in 2015. Yeah. Are the lads coming back? And not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Both of them are very settled in their own careers, doing what they're doing. I think, you know, give them another few years. And Nikki's killing it on TFM. I love him on that. We with Jenny. love listening like, to them every day. So good. So. And Marcus, Marcus's album is uh, really, really good. We love And same with, and then Shane as well. He's yeah. He just had his uh, duet with Nadine Corso. Do you know what? And Keen, of There's course, so he was king of the jungle them. and he's doing all presenting and he's doing yeah. the voice burn. Do you know what? Still busy enough. Give them a break and let them reform in a few I think 2016 could be the year that we see a slight No. I think if Louis Walsh had his way, they'd already be reunited. I think so too. If Louis had his I'm way, with him yeah. on that. I'm with him <laughs> Okay, now we're going to move on to number six. This story was really popular on the side and I think it's because everybody was so heartbroken. But it was the news that Michael Fassbender officially had a girlfriend. And I'm saying official because he actually talked about it in the press. It's I so know. Sad. Sound of thousands of hearts breaking simultaneously. Well, yeah, no, he uh, he's been seeing Alicia Vikander. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. But Vikander. But yeah, they both met on a, on set in Sydney, and she said, you know, he's a really great per like actor and person. So that kind of set everyone the rumor mills going, and yeah. then they both said. They're great. They're great. They're great. They love each other. They're and they've been kind of on and off because there's been reports other. that they broke up and they got back together. And normally with Michael Fassbender, I've only ever heard of like Flynn's. Nothing's ever really lasted. There's obviously the story about him and Naomi Campbell. He's been with a couple of his co-stars. Yeah. This is kind of the first romance that stuck it out. And as of now, as far as we're aware, they're still together. Alicia just actually denied a couple of weeks back that um, they had broken up at all when she was talking to Vogue. I know, do you know what, I think it helps that she's so success successful rather yeah. in her career as well and she's very strong and she's getting a lot of attention anyway. Yeah. I think that she can hold her own against him and I think maybe that's what he likes because you know, he's so accomplished and he's up for a Golden Globe, a Critics' Choice Award, all for some Definitely, jobs, so. I think Oscar, Oscar was as well. 
But isn't it sad? I mean, we're losing some of the top bachelors. All we've really left is Colin Farrell because Michael Fassbender and Jamie Dornan, they're gone. I know. They're off the market. Uh, well, so not, let's Michael, let's Michael could be single again, but um, maybe Colin is the hope for 2016. <laughs> Will we see him settle down in 2016? I don't think so. I think he's happy out. Do you know that? I think he's happy just focusing on his kids yeah. and on his work. Doing he's yoga. Spoken, he's spoken know. a lot this year, hasn't he, about kind of being a single dad and like focusing his life kind of on the kids. And also when all those Sony hack emails came out, he had turned down massive roles yeah. because he wanted to be with the kids. So it seems he's, like he's happy doing his own thing. He's happy out. I think he'll continue going along as he is. I think his career has gotten just even bigger this year. So I yeah. think next year is going to be an amazing year for him. So. We love you. <laughs> we do love you. And to someone else we love, we're going to move to number five. So the yeah. fifth red, most read story this year on Goss.ie was about Jamie Dornan, who also has another spot on the list as well. Yes. This story now was basically when Fifty Shades came out. There was so much pressure on him, I think, to do an amazing performance. And literally hours after it was released, people started blasting him. They said he was dull. They said he was motionless. There was a lot of hate when it came out. I think my favourite from Rolling Stone was saying that he was like a brick wall. Which yeah. <laughs> the critics were how harsh. You, they were very harsh. How can you try and like turn a blind eye to like how harsh the cr critique I was? Know. But you know what? That aside, I think Jay, we can all great. say it wasn't the best you. written movie slash book ever. Like it wasn't. But, but they had a lot of amazing. It did amazing. And Jamie Huge. himself pretty much said that. He was like, you know, the movie does well, it sells. Like, you know, he... He knew what he was getting himself in. Yeah. Or he's not an idiot. And it's know? led to so many other roles. So I think it was very unfair. He's filmed like three other films now. And he has another season of The Fall coming out. So he so excited. Really excited. excited. So, you know, it's only done his career a world of good. And, you know, I think like the second film is supposed to be filming soon enough. There's been a lot of delays on it. But... You know what? People know what they're getting themselves in for, and I think he kind of knows that he's a bit of just eye candy for it. He is eye candy. And there's actually been so many Fifty Shades stories on the site this year that did really well. A lot of them as well got to do with kind of what had been happening with him in Dakota. His co star, like, yeah. were they getting on? Was there a lack of chemistry really fighting? They've both denied it all the time, but I suppose we won't really see until the next movie. You won't out. know until the next one, but obviously they have a completely different director as well this, for this yeah. one. Very sad that they, they lost Sam, you know, for it, because she was amazing. Yeah. Um, I do think it was all down to creative control. I don't think Eli, creative differences. I, I don't think Eli wanted to give too much no. away of her, of her book. So that can always be an issue. So it depends what the script's like, depends what the director's like. We'll just have to wait and see. And are we going to see them in 2016 or is it being made in 2016? It's being made in 2016. It was supposed to get started this year, but just with all of James. Get so on it, get he on make it. it so keeps on getting pushed back, so we'll just have to wait another year. So from one sexy man to another, it leads us to number four on our list. So our fourth most read story on Goss.ie involves Alex Mitten from Maiden Chelsea and his Irish girlfriend Nicola Hughes. <laughs> this is probably one of my favourite stories of the whole year. Especially when you put the picture together. Yeah, especially when you put the picture together. Yeah, um, she may have popped her, her fellow with his... Um, with his ding dong hanging out. Yeah, they were on holidays in Barcelona and she uploaded a selfie up to Instagram with them. You know, she's posed perfectly in it, but then you could just see a naked Alex Mitten in the background. Um, deleted it straight away and was like, oh, I Not have I've some nice enough friends. for Goss that I you know. No, because we he full on got that before it completely went off. Yeah, so he was left red faced, but I think he was slightly enjoying it. Yeah. Well, there was like, a lot to look at, let's just say. We did, yeah. probably one of the only people that have seen the full image, because we blurred it out, obviously. But it's funny, because a lot of the Maiden Chelsea stars have been stuck in the situation, so a lot of people kind of question whether it's on purpose or not. Mm. Jamie Lang has had a naked photo before. Alec and Louise have had a they naked have, photo before. We all know about that one. Uh, we've all seen we that one. So, are they publicity stunts to get us back interested in Maiden Chelsea? Um, I don't know. The only thing is, it was deleted so quickly. Yeah, it they was. all were though. I know, but you know what, it probably was. Like, let's not, let's call a spade a spade, I'll just say it, yeah. But I mean, it's actually been a really good year. Tess Jean has been a really good year for Nicola Hughes, hasn't it? Ah, she really has got up there. Ortiz Exiles, yeah. uh, Made in Chelsea, she's had numerous modelling jobs, and obviously she's been on Exposé just a few weeks ago, so yeah. not a bother to her next year. Is that her year? Up. 
Yeah, the only way is up. Yeah, exactly. She probably will be still based in London. I don't see her coming back anytime soon. Yeah. They're probably living together, aren't they? Ah, sure look, Will they last, Lisa, Alex and Nicola, 2016? I don't know, because the last baby Chelsea kind of made them seem like they were going to break mm. up, but I think that was all just a There's a lot of selfies like. that confuse us then. Do you know what? They seem really happy on their social media, so I don't see why Always they trust want. social media over real life. Yeah. <laughs> or reality TV. <laughs> reality TV, yeah. A lot of holes in that. Yeah. Now on a little bit more of a serious note, we're going to go on to number three. This was the third most read story on Goss Study this year. We were actually the first publication in Ireland and most of Europe actually to break this story after TMZ originally did, yes. that Jim Carrey's Irish girlfriend had killed herself. Very, very sad. Yeah, I know. It was a really sad story to be reporting on it from the yeah. best. Um, it was a tough one. Yeah, Katrina White, she was originally from Tipperary. She was only 28 and um, she was found um, dead actually at her apartment. Um, she'd been just broken up with Jim Carrey apparently just before. And her before. suicide notes as well. Yeah, it, it is, to Jim. It's still all kind of report and speculative, but it is, you know, it's just very sad with anyone that young passing away. So, and especially Jim came over for the funeral actually, yeah. and um, there was a lot of photographs that come out, and he was he looked dead. So he looked really sad. Like, so. And the one thing that we kind of pride ourselves on here is not going to taking photos at any funerals. We've yeah. never done it, um, but you know we did obviously report on what happened, and it was terrible. But there was a lot of support for Jim, and he's been really supportive to her family as well, which is nice. You know, I think in any of these situations, it brings people together. So. Um, all Hopefully, the desires, yeah, yeah, the 2016 is, a, is an okay yeah. year for their family. Yeah, and for Zoom, just it's a happier time. So yeah. yeah. So we're going to go into a more light-hearted note. Um, our second most popular story read on Goss Study this yeah. year. It's probably the most fun I had writing a story, to be honest. <laughs> were the pictures of the Miss Bikini Ireland <gasps> contestants. So this is what happened. I got sent the photos of, um, I don't know, 20 to 30 girls on Harcourt Street on the Lewis track, wearing bikinis with their bikini tops off. They had said it was for breast cancer awareness. I contacted the Irish Cancer Society. It was not. And to make matters worse and even more hilarious, there was one photo of a girl walking away, um, which saw a girl in the background falling off a bike and a Lewis coming, so she got nicknamed Lewis Girl. I know, forget the guy who fell on the ice, it's all about Lewis Girl. All about Lewis Girl. All this about year. Lewis yeah, Girl yeah. this year. But yeah, that was. How cringe were those photos? Do you know what they actually were? And I think, as much as I feel bad for the girls, I think they were slightly naive into thinking that it was for breast cancer yeah. awareness. I think if it was, I think breast cancer awareness would have been on site. Yeah, they would have helped out. And they would have helped out and maybe said this is maybe the more tasteful way that we want to go for it, instead of being in the middle of Harcourt Street. With on a people cold walking day by, absolutely freezing. Yeah, like there was massive backlash from it. Like so many of the girls tried to say that like the photos were real, like it was for cancer society. Definitely, definitely wasn't. Also, the weird thing, they tried to say it was part of the Free the Nipple campaign, which is obviously huge on Instagram, and Miley Cyrus has been all a part of it. And But if you're covering your nipples, you're not really part Free of Free the, the Nipple. nipple. No. So there was a lot of uh, contradictions, and but it made for hilarious writing and massive. hilarious photographs. And it just massive publicity. Hilarious. Like Those girls got on some of the front pages in the UK. The Lewis girl in question, she got a campaign with uh, Backstory and more. more. You and know, she landed like all these gigs after it, and crazy. they went worldwide. Went, went on to Fox News in America as well. And the thing is, I think though it was a bit telling. A couple of the girls did pull out the contestant after we published yeah. the photos because it just didn't look right. And I'm all for raising awareness for things. There's tasteful Obviously. ways to do it. You know, Ross Purcell has done stuff for the Irish Breast yeah, Cancer Association. Like loads of people have, and there's tasteful ways to do topless pictures. That was not the way to do it. No, I just said, uh, yeah. It, but it still, Lewis Girl. If there's one thing that we got, it was Lewis Girl. And finally, we're at the number one spot. Woo! We got there finally. Our <laughs> top story on the site, which I swear, Lishy has nearly two million unique page views to this date, was the story that Jamie Dornan had quit Fifty Shades of Grey. He hadn't quit, but there was rumours that he was walking away from the franchise. This was the story that just kept on giving. He's Still back, around. he's gone, he's back, he's, he's back gone. again. No one knew, and so much so that his agent had to release a statement to all the press around the world saying that he was not leaving. 
Fifty Shades. This is just the best story ever. I don't think um, we ever thought that something would explode as so much, so much. Yeah. but it just showed the power of Jamie Dornan. He is like, honestly, people were freaking out. I remember reading all the tweets. There was Facebook comments from just, all over the world. We were getting comments from America, from New Zealand, like yeah. everywhere. People were like, is he gone or is he not? What's happening? People were tweeting him massively then, asking mm. him what was going on. So eventually he did come out and said, yes, I'm staying. No, I'm not leaving. And then we did the next article, which was, he's back. <laughs> so for any genuine proper gossip readers, you will realize that quite often we do write the headline, they're back, he's back, she's back. But it's literally just an inside joke. It's an inside joke based on the Jamie Dornan story. I mean, how crazy. I remember meeting someone from Scotland a couple of weeks afterwards and yeah. she knew about the site because she'd read the Jamie Dornan story. So it was one of those stories that went bizarre and it was the first time that month then, it was last February, that we reached a million hits a month. I and know. now we're doing that all the time, but it was a really, really exciting time. It actually, time. yeah, it was a really exciting time in the office and just, you know, Reading that story, obviously we must give some background to the reason why he thought he, he was going to actually quit Fifty Shades was because of his wife. Apparently she was disapproving of him in the film. She wasn't going to look at the film. She wasn't happy with the chemistry between him and Dakota. But so many different so things. So many different things. I However, think that's why he came out though, because it was more about the wife not being happy. I think he felt he had to say something then. I think he's like standing up for his woman like any right man should. Yeah. If you ever want to walk away again, Jamie, hit us up. We got so many hits. We are happy shit again. If anyone ever has a Jamie Dornan story, do let us know. And in fairness, we cover Jamie Dornan quite often. We had stories up of him filming the fall. He was back with his fans. Let's not forget about the moustache. Oh, uh, the moustache. That that did that around a lot in. this year. That so. did as well. You know, anything with Jamie Dornan, because he didn't actually have a, an Instagram account up until this year. Yeah. And so when he launched that, Everyone went crazy, crazy, absolutely. And crazy. then when he posted a picture of himself with a mustache, oh my god! And good it's funny because he's night. such a normal guy. He's still really normal. He still hangs out with the fans. I met him at the IFTA it's like oh, two years in a row. Lucky woman. And he was so lovely. And Fifty Shades hadn't come out the second time I saw him at the IFTA. As he had just been filming it, but he was still a lovely, lovely normal guy and he still is like the amount of pictures we have on the side of him with his fans it's just been an amazing year for him and if there's if 2016 is a year for anyone now as well i think jamie jordan it's just going to keep him getting bigger and it's amazing yeah. for ireland it's an irish actor doing so we well like that. i think just irish in film are doing incredibly well anyway and i think the 2016 is going to be huge for them so, so we want to say a huge <laughs> happy new year to all of our readers thank you for all our support it's been an amazing year 2015 2016 is going to be huge thank you so much it's going to be a fire